Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night at the local time. And Ukrainians during the previous night attacked uh, two areas with missiles, the Ukrainians were attacking Belgorod and the Ukrainians were attacking Crimea. When talking about Belgorod, the Ukrainians mainly were using multiple launch rocket systems like vampires and as a result of those attacks, few people in the area were wounded and uh, uh, the Russians, uh, means to defense of Russian Federation, somewhere at uh, 12 uh, p.m. of the local time, reported that uh, during the previous evening they managed to bring down up to 19 missiles of uh, a vampire multiple launch rocket system. Um, from Belgorod we have few videos, uh, we have few videos people were uh, trying to hide somewhere between the buildings uh, trying not to be hit by Ukrainian missiles uh, but anyway regarding the attempts to hide a few people were wounded a very powerful missile attack uh, took place uh, in Crimea according to the sources we have uh, the Ukrainians were using up to 10 some sources are saying that the Ukrainians were using 10 uh, Su-24 uh, aircraft with storm shadow missiles some sources were saying that there were just nine anyway there was one of the most most powerful attack in Crimea. Uh, the Russians published during the night, they published lots of photo pictures. For example, on this picture, we can see the result of work of um, a Russian air defense. During the previous night, uh, the uh, United States or, or NATO Global Hawk and reconnaissance aircrafts were flying in the Black Sea, trying to coordinate and target the Ukrainian missiles. And uh, the most powerful attack took place in the city by the name of Sevastopol. For example, on this video, we can see the strike. Uh, very powerful there were three strikes of storm shadow in one direction either there was just one strike and then there was a secondary detonation or there were like three missiles hit one target very difficult to understand the building was geolocated and according to geolocation there's nothing important nothing interesting in the area uh, so currently it's very difficult to understand what the ukrainians were trying to hit and destroy and we have another video of air defense work we can see like one storm shadow was bring down by the russian air defense systems uh, later the russians provided us more details about attack and according to official russian sources as a result of attack one people lost his life and four were wounded uh, for, as a result of one of the most massive attack on Sevastopol. The, uh, the entire attack uh, took place around two hours. Uh, the Russians managed to bring down uh, around 28 missiles during that attack. So lots of lots of very powerful strike. And after the Ukrainians finished with the attack on Crimea, the Russians launched their own attack on the territory of Ukraine. And um, they were mainly the Russians were attacking with missiles and with drones of course we can see uh, this map of the movement and the road roads of Russian missiles and drones and as you can see based on the map mainly the Russians were trying to search trying to hit the object military objects of Ukraine in the western part furthermore pay attention to this uh, small picture to this small let's say left top corner according to information we have uh, this information was confirmed either by the Russians Ukraine and the let's say Ukrainian sources the Russians crossed the border with Poland and up to 40 seconds or 39 seconds the Russian missile was in the space of Poland and uh, uh, after yeah, so that was as I understand uh, the attempt from the Russian side to search Ukrainian military objects and uh, very likely they managed to find some then there was very heavy explosions and according to information we have uh, during the previous night um, around 20 missiles and seven drones uh, got and attacked the Lvov uh, western part of Ukraine Lvov area it's western part of Ukraine and later we have additional report, additional update about the uh, strikes in the area uh, that uh, the Russians mainly uh, were trying to hit and were trying to get the airfield in the vicinity of uh, three. So this is the settlement, the town that located in Lvov area. And according to information we have, after the Russians finished the first wave of attack, uh, there was a short operational pause. Probably the Russians were, let's say, uh, summarizing the information they managed to get. And after, uh, let's say, an hour or maybe two hours, the Russians launched another attack. But the next time, 
Uh, the Russians were attacking with uh, MiG uh, and with Kinjal uh, hypersonic missiles. There were probably three hypersonic missiles sent in the village by the name of Stray. And according to information we have, uh, the Russians attacked and destroyed the airfield that Ukrainians just finished prepare, just um, have finished the preparation for F-16s. Maybe the Russians managed to destroy F-16s as well. Anyway, today we're going to receive some details from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation and very likely it's going to be very interesting. So this is approximately probably the airfield that Ukrainians were upgrading for uh, the use of F-16 and the Russians attacked this area today. And uh, now let's move to the situation on the ground. We have very interesting updates and details from Bakhmut and Avdeevka directions. First, let's talk about Avdeevka area. According to information we have and according to different pro-Ukrainian, neutral and pro-Russian mappers, the Russians continue advancing between Toninka and Severna Vadiana towards Nitailova. As you can see, the Russians capture additional field. For now, we haven't received any geolocation confirming this progress, but I have no doubts that the Russians managed to do this. Just to want to get some geolocations or from the area, from this area or from the area to the west of the territory, then we will adjust the map. But uh, I, I'm telling you that it's very likely that the fields are already under the Russian control. So as we discussed in the previous videos, very likely that the Russians will face no, let's say barriers no resistance from the ukrainian side until they get this line and somewhere on this line the next phase of the special military operation not not just of the special military operation but the next phase of uh, uh, clashes for this territory is going to start there are three towns uh, four towns to be more precise more precisely uh, it's um, nitailova yasnabrodovka uh, and uh, pervomaiska and Umanska, so the fourth uh, towns that the Russians will try to storm during the next uh, months. And we have additional reports from different mappers, like neutral mappers and like pro-Ukrainian mappers and Russian, pro-Russian mappers, that the Russians managed to maintain their positions, maintain the gray zone or Ukrainian positions between uh, the, the villages like uh, Orlovka and uh, Berdychi. So according to uh, different mappers, this territory is already in the Russian control and we can say that the Russian have already started or about to finish the uh, assault operation in the direction of Semenovka and Berdychi. Very likely the next 72, 000, uh, 72 hours either Berdychi or Semenovka will fall and will get under the complete Russian control. Uh, now we are moving to Bakhmut Avdi, Bakhmut Artemov's direction. We have lots of very interesting details and updates as we discussed yesterday. As a result of Russian offensive operation, the, the Russians uh, captured completely the village by the name of Ivanovska. The Ukrainians were forced to fall back to the forest that located to the west of the village. And this morning, uh, this night, we continue receiving lots of updates from the foothold between Ivanovska, uh, Chasavyar and the railways. According to, let's say, Syriac, the Russian captured and established control just over this tree line so based on the Syriac version this territory is already under the Russian control now for example according to uh, pro-Ukrainian sources, the Russians managed to advance further and to uh, capture additional strongholds and additional uh, fortifications of the armed forces of Ukraine on the direction. So this is approximately the progress of the Russians according to pro-Ukrainian sources. And when talking about uh, the pro-Russian sources, they managed to capture the previous two progress by different mappers, by the mappers and to move further to the west and how the Russians have almost reached the outskirts of the city by the name of uh, Chasavyar. So According to pro-Russian sources, this is approximately the progress of the armed forces of Russian Federation on the, this uh, direction. So this is approximately the progress of the Russian forces in this area. So as you can see, significant result and the, we can say that the clashes of for uh, Chasavyar uh, are about to start. Uh, anyway, uh, when talking about this operation, we can make a conclusion based on the geography and configuration of the front line that very likely the Russians will try to attack along the railways. And this information we received in the previous days that the Russians will try very likely to attack the area through the forest, this one, and they will try to attack uh, from the residential area to the north along the railways. The Russians are not going to attack the area, let's say, in front due to possible significant number of 
losses and casualties. Anyway, now we see that the battle for this side of canal is about to be finished, right? So we can make a conclusion that very likely uh, the Russians uh, will be able and are going to establish control over this territory within the next maybe months, maybe even less, maybe a little bit more. So we have no doubts that the Russians are going to capture everything that located between canal, uh, between the channel, this one, and the Russian positions. The Russians will try to establish control over the some quarters and blocks uh, in Chasavyar. The Russians will try to finish the battle for Bogdanovka. The Russians will try to get the forest, so Klishev, come the fortifications around. And of course, the important question, what the Russians are planning to do next. And if you ask my opinion, some sources are saying that the Russians will try to cross the canal and then to attack Chasavyar from the south and many, many other things that the Russians are planning to do. But yeah, if you ask my opinion, I suppose that the next thing the Russians are going to do is to attack Seversk. We have additional uh, FPV drones, additional geolocations of FPV drone strikes on Ukrainian positions to the south of Seversk in the vicinity of Fyodorov Karazdolovka. We discussed this area many times during the previous uh, weeks. If we increase the numbers of this since the beginning of March, we see a very big and very, let's say, a big Russian concentration in, in the area. We see the Russians have already ruined and destroyed the fortifications and the first defense belt in front of Razdolovka. We see certain Russian progress between Vasikovka and Fyodorovka. So obviously, obviously, uh, I have no doubts that the, during the next, uh, let's say, few days, uh, maybe even less, the Russian, not days, maybe weeks uh, or something like this, the Russians will try to establish control over at least something like this so uh, because due to the focus and due to let's say the russian uh, just due to the russian focus yes and also we know for sure that currently the russians are trying to storm bilogorovka and the landfills in the area uh, today the russians very likely made another few more attempts to attack a few more attempts to assault the area the ukrainians tried to repel the russian attacks with the fpv drones and very likely the ukrainians managed to do this on this video for example we can see another russian destroyer tank and as a result of attack uh, the tank was destroyed right and uh, so we can say that uh, very likely the russians are trying to establish control over something like this to establish control over bilogorovko over the hills and over the positions of 81st Mo air mobile brigade Furthermore, we have a certain Russian focus along the railways, so uh, during the next few days, very likely we're going to see more attempts from the Russians at sight to attack on this direction, and very likely the Russians are going to attack to renew their attempts to offensive Ukrainian positions in the vicinity of Sporne, the village by the name of Sporne. So these are, let's say, uh, uh, areas of active clashes from the Russian side, Fyodorov, Karazdolovka, uh, Vyimka, the railways, Sporne and Bilogorovka. And if the Russians are able to establish control over every single, um, let's say, foothold over every single area, then we can make a conclusion that uh, Siversk will fall very soon and very fast. The only problem that the Russians are facing currently is uh, that they can't still uh, haven't found the solution how to get as close as possible to Siversk, let's say, from the north in direction, uh, through, uh, in direction of Siversk Donetsk River. Of course, due to this might be like the best and also very good um let's say good achievement uh, for the russian in for the russians in uh before the further offensive for sever so once again after the end of battle for bakhmut artemovsk foothold on the russian side of canal then very likely they will turn their let's say uh, turn their attention and uh, their focus to serious and they will try to cut these uh, salient uh, as far as, as as fast as possible and then they will be able to continue movement further to slavyansk and uh, kramatorsk we haven't received anything from the northern direction. Uh, we start receiving some updates um, from um, Novomikhailovka area. The Ukrainian sources published the video of another Russian attack using tanks. Uh, to be uh, more precisely, the Russians were using demining equipment, two tanks with demining equipment, and the Ukrainians basically destroyed the tanks with FPV drone strikes. And this video confirms that very likely the Russians were planning to clear the area uh, between uh, the Russian 
Russian control positions in this direction and towards this tree line. But uh, and the Russians started moving there. But in this area, the Russian tanks were damaged and destroyed by FP1. Very likely that that um, that wasn't the last attempt from the Russian side, and very likely that the next few days we're gonna see more and more attempts from the Russian side to clear this area and then from this direction to attack uh, the Ukrainians. Uh, let's say the western part and the let's say road between uh, Konstantinovka and Novomikhailovka basically to encircle the rest of Ukrainian forces inside of the village. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.